So what is the one thing that unites people from all over the world? Food, the world's largest religion. And uh, today I'm in Tokyo. Food Mecca or Bethlehem or Varanasi or all of them, I guess. So let's talk about the future of food. There are more than 200,000 restaurants in Tokyo. No city in the world have more Michelin-starred restaurants. But it doesn't have to be fancy. Even the tiniest hole in the wall serving $10 meals takes great pride in the food they serve. In Japan, every meal should start with the word itadakimasu. Uh, that means uh, that I'm grateful. Grateful to everyone and everything involved in making this meal happen. So I'm grateful for the, for the farmer, for the chef, for the waiting staff and, and everyone surrounding me right now to make this, this moment happen. And of course I'm grateful to the food itself, the ingredients, the broccoli, the fish, the, the broth and everything. Think of that and then think of our, our modern culture of fast food, drive through eating on the go. And maybe that explains why so many of us actually forgot how to eat properly. Yes, I'm serious. We don't know how to eat, even though most people do that three times a day. More people globally die from eating too much rather than too little. So that's amazing, of course, from an accomplishment and a growth perspective. But it's a tragedy from so many other perspectives. Let's think about the costs. So first of all, obviously for, for the individual, the, the tragedy of uh, obesity, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, all these problems as a result of not being able to eat properly. Then you have the, the healthcare costs from a society perspective and the environmental costs. Um, not to talk about the animal suffering. So, a lot of huge problems here that we have to fix. We are a long way from itadakimasu. We have lost our religion, it's fair to say. And the food industry, to be honest, doesn't do much to help. Of course, technology will help us. Health is one of the big trends in tech right now. And uh, with wearable and then later on implantable devices, we will be able to measure and track everything. And who wouldn't want to know more about the health of their own body? I mean, not as a once every three years doctor checkup, but, but a live feed and a connection to lifestyle decisions, such as the food we eat. And you're not the only one who wants to know more about your health. Think about your health provider or the insurance company. They want to know for sure. I mean, of course, there will be a lot of issues around integrity. Uh, but then think about the value of knowing everything, all the data surrounding your health. And then think about who will be able to afford to stay outside of that kind of system. So if social media made us give up privacy for some thumbs up from the outside world, um, think of the potential for a constant flow of likes from your inside. Then of course there will be many new technologies and trends in food like functional food, uh, lab-grown seafood, 3D printed hamburgers, uh, insect proteins, plant-based foods. But if you want to know the future, let's not get stuck in technology. Let's focus on today's problems. Big problems equals big opportunities. So if you're in the industry or maybe uh, an entrepreneur, think of it like this. Am I actually fixing a problem or creating new ones? Because if you are creating new problems, then you will be disrupted by someone who is actually fixing it. Because the future of food will be all about fixing today's problems and helping, teaching people to eat more healthy, more sustainable, from all these perspectives I've been talking about. What do you think about the future of food? Please share your comments in the section below. Oh yeah, one more thing for you about the future. Hara Hachibu, never eat more than 80% full. That's what they say here in Japan. If you like these kind of uh, short speeches about future trends, then hit subscribe and I see you in the future. <laughs>